Is it, it weird that you have these <laughs> stars on your... I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. Hey guys, it's Kilian and Michal and we present you the weekly episode of Culture Clash. Tonight I want to recommend you and this lovely audience who gathered here a very nice TV show called Barry. Yep. Hey man, are you seeing this beautiful morning? What are you doing? How are you? What am I doing? I'm set up here like you asked me to. Oh, right, duh. The TV show Barry was partly directed and also produced by the actor Bill Hader. Which we know from SNL, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. <laughs> the story is about a veteran soldier from Afghanistan who comes back to the normal life but of course he struggles with his past. After the war, he becomes the hired killer. At the beginning of the first episodes, he has an order to kill one of the guy who is participating at the acting school classes. When Barry arrives to the classes, he finds out that the acting is the thing that he really wants to do. So he joins to this acting course. Hey man, are you new to this class? Help me out. Ryan, you're up. I'm gonna do the scene with him. So Barry wants to be an actor and leave the profession of being a killer. But this is something that is very complicated to get out of. The whole story is very comedic, uh, has a very light humor, a lot of absurd also. Sometimes the humor is similar to Tarantino's movies, because for example, you have uh, the mafia a group from Chechnya. This group of people, they really want to be like the real gangster from the movies, uh, but they are just ordinary people and it looks like very funny and there, there are a lot of absurd. So at the beginning, we think that Barry is gonna be just, you know, this very funny, uh, very light TV shows that you can just enjoy in the evenings. But in fact, after some episodes, we find out that uh, there is something deeper in the story. And uh, also the character played by Bill Hader is, has a very uh, deep psychologist background. Also, it's very interesting that the main character is participating uh, at the acting course through some scenes, for example, from Shakespeare's he's playing in the TV shows, we can see the reflection, what is going in his life at the moment. Yeah. And you know, you can see some like psychological yeah. stuff. But this TV show is doing very good job in, you know, switching the moods. Mm -hmm. So later, for example, it's more like Breaking Bad sometimes, because wow. also the Bill Hader is this kind of character who is, you know, evil, mm -hmm. <laughs> is doing very I mean, bad yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's an assassin. You know, you know, but, uh, but of course, this is someone who you wouldn't like to, you know, know <laughs> for sure. But in the TV show, when you're watching him, you somehow are on his side, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even if he is doing the very mm -hmm. bad stuff. So like, this is something very interesting about TV shows. But on the other hand, you, you know that you don't like him. Like he's, he, no, just no. <laughs> so just, it somehow shifts from a more comedic tone yeah. to really serious and kind but of dark tone. In a very good way, like very smoothly, you know. I'm done, Fuchs. Starting now. Bravo! I think also that this humor comes from the Hiro Murai who directed some of the episodes. Uh, you may know him from the TV show Atlanta uh, in which he also was a director. So it's cool. And uh, yeah, I just recommend you to check Barry TV show. Uh, I think you're gonna like it. Maybe not, but that's still Maybe okay we'll to check this. I will watch it. It's really, it sounds really interesting. Our next topic is the relatively new Netflix film called News of the World with Tom Hanks and the German actress Helena Sengel. What's your business up here? I read the news from town to town. I was headed down south. I found this child. Friend. The film is really well done. It's a Western film. The protagonist was a printer before the Civil War. He fought in the Civil War and after the war a lot of things changed and he now has to travel around the country to make money. He reads out of a newspaper for uh, the population of the local villages now. So while he is on one of his journeys, he by accident meets this young girl who seems to be quite uncivilized, who seems to be living out of civilization. 
uh, and she is speaking Native American language, uh, but she looks quite European and over time we learn uh, that her original German parents were murdered by Native Americans, but then her new Native American parents were also murdered. So now she doesn't have any home at all and the protagonist wants to bring her home uh, to some relatives of her German family. So that's like the starting point of the story. They kill you. How much you offer? She's not for sale. So the story is quite emotional. So um, you can really feel with the characters because the protagonist has some really sad backstory as well. You can see that the war changed and that's why I think he can relate to this girl who was also traumatized because she has seen terrible things. She's so young but still she had such major changes in her life and had to see how her family was killed. So I think he feels a natural empathy for her. And we follow these two characters for the whole story that has a lot of twists, it's quite fun to watch. Um, while he's trying to uh, bring her to a family, but they develop a connection to each other, which um, may lead to a different ending that we would have originally thought. And what do you think about this uh, movie as a Netflix production? Because recently we are getting a lot of good Netflix movies, which is something new. I, I think that now movies from Netflix are better than the TV shows mostly. And yeah, how, how do you score this movie, you know, in the when you have all other Netflix yeah, movies so the, in the background? Yeah, this film is high budget, so it could be a cinema movie at any time. Um, I think that Netflix is giving us the chance to see like lots of uh, films from other countries which we never would have gotten the opportunity to watch in the cinema for example and uh, that's that's a good thing about Netflix is what I think and of course during, during these COVID times it's uh, nice to have this film as a, Netflix as a Netflix production so we can enjoy it at home instead of waiting uh, until the whole COVID stuff ends and I think that Netflix has done a great job producing this film. By the way, uh, do you know that uh, Avatar came back to cinemas in the, China? Because the old, the, the yeah, James yeah, yeah. Cameron film. From 2009, because yeah. there was this competition between Avatar and Avengers Endgame in the cinemas, you know, that... No, I didn't because, know about that. So Avatar movie by James Cameron was uh, on the first place in this competition of the box office mm -hmm. in the movies, right? Mm -hmm. um, and Avengers uh, Endgame, when came to the cinemas, uh, there was this big fight if the Avengers will take over the first place. So they won, so Avengers took over the first place. Uh, but now um, Avatar came back again to China <laughs> and I think that they earned like about 12 million dollars, something wow. like that. I'm not, I'm not sure, I will fix this maybe if it's not true. Now Avatar is again on the first position. Incredible. But I think this fight uh, is not so interesting anymore because Avatar uh, before was uh, a movie by 20th Century Fox, but yeah. Disney bought 20th Century Fox, so mm -hmm. it's not like the real competition yeah. right now yeah. between the studios. I guess in, in a short time there will be the second part of Avatar. Like yeah, yeah. Will be yeah they're, they're working on yeah. the new new. Yeah, that's movies. like half of my life I've been uh, thinking about the second part of this film. I remember I was so small when I was yeah. in, in the cinema yeah. watching Avatar. Yeah, yeah. I, I have the same thing uh, with Marvel, for instance, yeah. because, you know, I was quite young when there was the first Avengers movie with, uh, which introduced the Thanos. And, you know, uh, I, I was much older when I finally uh, was able to see the final fight between yeah. Thanos and the Avengers. Mm -hmm. So it was all my life uh, in the Marvel world, for example. Yeah. So I guess we will end this episode uh, with the new Kings of Leon album called When You See Yourself. It has been released a very short time ago and it's quite well done, I think. It's way more experimental record than the uh, Kings of Leon albums before. Like uh, their last album called Walls was really pop 
like. So you had uh, like these typical Kings of Leon hits that could be played uh, on the radio. And of course we know Kings of Leon as a pop rock group with hits like Sex and Fire and You Somebody. But this new record is quite toned down. We have uh, songs like this as well, for example, The Bandit. The whole album uh, is also looking at more serious topics. For example, the lead singer Caleb Followhill is writing about the dementia of his father-in-law in one uh, song called 100,000 People. So it's more like personal album now. Yeah, I guess. I, To be honest, I haven't looked at all the lyrics so deeply, but I can say that this album is not constructed like we do need to bring a certain amount of pop hit songs that we can play on the radio. There's more like they are trying to go new ways now, which I think is after the last album, which was also good, but like a really a typical pop album, now an interesting new way. So I would recommend this album to you. Yeah, I mean, for example, I prefer when the band is trying to develop and yeah. find new ways of performing and making music. And because like you have some of the bands that, for example, when they release a new album, it's gonna be exactly the same yeah. product we got a few years ago. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's sometimes awesome. it's nice because sometimes you don't expect anything new. You just want to have the same atmosphere. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of trying new things. Yeah. It's always better when things evolve in music than when they always stay the same because there's not like the recipe for the perfect uh, song that can always be repeated. They have to evolve to yeah. keep on being uh, relevant. But was it, it a surprise when you listened to the album for yeah, the first time? Yeah, it was quite a surprise. It was not was a, what I expected because I had only heard The Bandit before and that sounded typical Kings of Leon uh, mm -hmm. like to me. So I thought, oh, that's the way the rest of the album is going to sound as well. But it was different and I was pleasantly surprised. Okay, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or recommendations, write them down in the comments. And if you liked it, we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye.